Rebag, your premier destination for luxury resale. Elevate your style with our curated collection of bags, watches, and fine jewelry. At Rebag, quality is our priority. Each piece meticulously vetted and verified by experts, ensuring your investment is nothing short of perfection. Buy and sell finds from the world's top brands, including Hermes, Chanel, and Cartier. Access expertly crafted and hard-to-find pieces that redefine luxury. Your next investment awaits at Rebag. Get 10% off your first purchase with code REBAG10. That's 10% off the luxury you deserve. Don't miss out. Head to Rebag.com and enter code REBAG10 at checkout. That's R-E-B-A-G-1-0. Millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, Right. For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am. But Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. Hello, you are listening to Just Films and That. This is the podcast where we talk about films we think might be underrated or underseen. I'm the host for this week, Josh Hallman, and I'm joined as ever by my co-host, Alice Oliver. It was Alice's turn to pick this week, so let's see what we reckon. So this week we're going to be talking about Tremors 2 Aftershocks. Before we do that, I just want to draw your attention to our Patreon page. If you want a little bit of extra content from us, access to episodes a day early or ad-free episodes, extended episodes, stuff like that, click the link in the episode description, patreon.com forward slash just films and that, and it'll take you to it. Um, all tiers include, as I say, ad-free extended episodes that you get a day early and that, that starts at £1 a month. Any support you can give us will be massively appreciated anyway. Alice. Yeah. Tremors Hello. 2 Aftershocks uh-huh, from 1996, are. I want to say, something like that. Okay. Um, spoiler warnings if you haven't seen Tremors 2 Aftershocks. Um, I, I'm intrigued by this one, Alice. So <laughs> I think I know why you picked it. That's but, obvious, surely. It's but obvious. <laughs> tell the people at home a little snippet of what it's about and why did you pick it for the podcast? Is it underrated? Is it underseen? Do you just like big worms? So, well, I think we've established that, yes, I do just like big worms. We've had tremors. <laughs> You've seen me, me reviews of Dune. Like, I'm yeah. all about the big sandworms. Sandy worms, worms um, is a really specific taste you have in films, but it's I there. Know, yeah, I don't get it. I don't know where that's come from. Beetlejuice, there's sandworms in that, if you like uh, you Beetlejuice. Know, I've not seen it, you know. Have I've you not? I've not seen it. No, it's watch it in time list, for though. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, the sequel yes. to Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice, yes. Beetlejuice. Yes, I love that as a sequel name as well. But yeah, that is definitely one on my list. But yes, Tremors 2 Aftershock. So it's an action comedy horror and is a direct-to-video sequel to Tremors, which was one of the first films I chose when I joined Just Films in that. So in the first film, it is believed that all the graboids have been successfully destroyed, but there now seems to be a new swarm of the creatures killing people in Mexico. So Earl is brought back to try and deal with the problem and is joined a little ways down the road by Bert. And they soon discover that the graboids are reproducing and their offspring are two-legged creatures that can move above ground and see using infrared. Dun, dun, dun. (gasps) Spooky. Um, Why did I pick it? You know what? I reckon, I think it's definitely underseen. Um, yeah. I definitely think it's straight to video. I've, I've yeah, think straight I've, to video, yeah. I think we've done a couple of straight to video Not uh, loads, films. though. Not loads, no, no, not Stuart loads. Stuart Life backwards. Yeah, uh, i definitely well, I suppose done. it's like TV films slash straight to video. They, cut some, they can be quite similar, can't they? Like they were shown once on TV and then they went uh-huh. straight to video. So maybe Stuart Life backwards wasn't. It's definitely, was because I think it was on telly, wasn't it? So this is definitely straight to video or DVD yeah. or whatever. I can't think of others. Action Force, I think, oh, yeah. was, was like yeah, a sort yeah, of a yeah. straight to yeah. video or, or a straight to TV or, or whatever it was. Yeah. And I'm sure there was a couple more, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so I, d- I do think it's underseen in that regard. I do think it might be a little bit underrated as well. Okay. okay. Critically, yeah. Okay. I, that's 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 kind of what I thought when I picked it anyway. We'll see. We'll see if I still <laughs> feel the same at the end of this. But, you know, I think... Sometimes I feel like I need to have the discussion mm. to really know how I feel about something and hear some of the things that you have to say about it too. How do you? So was this one you'd seen before or did you watch it because you liked Tremors when we did it last time? Like, had you seen a few of the Tremors films back in the day or? This is, so this is the only sequel that I'd seen, but we, I had seen this sort of 
not at the time, but when I was very, very young. Once right, again. But you, had, you didn't watch it because we did Tremors on no, the podcast. No, 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 no. I have already Tremors seen too. it. Yeah. It was, it was again, um, uh, t- you know, Roger taped it off the Big television. Yeah. Big Rog taped it off the TV. So we, we had it on VHS in that regard. Um, and I just remember I had the memory of really enjoying it. Mm. Similar to a couple of the films we've done as well. Couldn't really remember like loads about it and like mm. the finer details. I knew that the new monsters were kind of on two legs and stuff. And I knew that Earl and Bert were obviously back in it as well. But I couldn't remember, you know, strictly the the narrative concept as it were. But I just remembered having quite a lot of fun mm. whilst watching it. Mm. Uh, I'm going to... I'm going to place my bets and say that you hadn't <laughs> seen this one before, Josh. No, no, I hadn't seen it. So so when we did Tremors, I'd heard mm. of Tremors and never seen it, and I watched it and I enjoyed it. I remember thinking yeah. it was, you know, fun and schlocky and stuff like that. When we did that episode, that was when I found out there was eight sequels or seven sequels yeah. or something like that. <laughs> the most lot. recent one is from 2020. So Wild, they're still it? making them uh, mm-hmm. and Bert's still in them. Yeah. Um... So no, I hadn't seen this before. You know, I don't. I don't think it would be a surprise to say. Whilst I enjoyed the first Tremors, I went into this with with low expectations. Mm-hmm. Don't really know why. Probably mm-hmm. because again, I enjoyed the first Tremors. So, so it's probably because it went direct to video, mm-hmm. and that's usually not always, but it is quite often usually, or it certainly was back in the day, a mark of a lack of confidence in the film. Yes. So it was like, we're not going to back this for a release, stick it straight on video, try and make our money back on video or DVD. And, you know, whereas now they just kill the film completely, like Batgirl Mm -hmm. or um, Acme versus Coyote. or Yeah. So no, I hadn't seen it before and I did go into this with with low expectations. So do you want me to say what I thought overall or do you want to go into what you liked about it? I think let's start with you, Josh. I'm yeah. keen to know what you thought of this <laughs> and watching this for the first time in 2024. Overall, I enjoyed it, you know. I thought mm-hmm. it was good fun. I thought it was, I thought, I, I mean, probably helped that I went in with low expectations, to be honest mm-hmm. with you, because I was just like waiting for it to be bad. And it was just sort of more of the same. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and no, and I don't mean that in a bad way. They're you know, more of that same tongue in cheek, funny, daft but also you know good bit of tension building and good bit of sort of means on scene and world building and stuff like that so overall i enjoyed it of course what i liked in a minute but i want to give you your chance to to give tremors aftershocks it's due what do you like about it so i think similar to what you said there like it is it is quite daft and it is quite silly and i think it really it leans into that a lot more in this one uh, mm. than it does in the first film for sure. So I will say it did take me a little bit of time to warm up to this one. Like I and I was thinking like sort of during the first ha- half hour if I'd misjudged it and possibly made a bad decision by picking the film for the podcast. <laughs> but it was about half an hour or so in when Bert, so played by Michael Gross, when he mm. rejoins the fray, it really picks it up for me. Mm. So I love Bert. He's brilliant in the first one. He's such an extreme character with so much energy energy he's this real gun enthusiast and a bit of a tinfoil hat conspiracy theorist but then he's actually a really good problem solver as well and he's quite fearless and he seems so confident in his own abilities when he's faced with these terrifying dangerous creatures and he's just so much fun to watch i love so, i love that character as well oh he's I, so uh, great so i isn't think what, he? one of the things i like about him is so like you say he's a bit of a what he says he sort of says he's a survivalist doesn't he so he's got yeah. you know food that military supply food that lasts for 10 years yeah. and all that sort of stuff <laughs> yeah. and loads of guns and ammo and trucks so many and, guns yeah and bombs. all that <laughs> and what you're sort of used to seeing is characters like that as a fish out of water not in their element where they're the strange one yeah and not the person you really would want on your team whereas what the what tremors does is put him exactly where you'd want him on your team 100 percent. and he's just mm-hmm. you know he's just in his element yeah yep Absolutely. And it, you get that from him sort of in the first one as well. He's like, he's got all these, all this equipment and, you know, this like underground bunker and all these things and they come in so handy in the end sort of thing. Mm. And it's like, oh, see, I told you, told you, Bert, <laughs> you best sort of thing. So he really lifted it up for me quite a lot. I do, I really enjoy the look of it as well. So obviously we've got similar landscape uh, to the first one. It's dry and it's pretty arid and it's really dramatic and it feels really isolated, but there's something quite enjoyable. Like it feels really isolated and it complements the vibe of the film really well, but sometimes it feels really relaxing. Like when Earl and... um, 
uh, oh goodness, Grady. the kid's name, Grady, Grady. When Earl and Grady are just sort of like chilling out, like in the truck and that, like waiting for something to happen, you know, they're trying to uh, lure one of the graboids to come up to them and that. And they're just sitting there and, you, you know, you've got like these beautiful wide shots there on the truck and there's all this landscape in the background. There's something quite soothing and quite calming mm. about it. And then obviously the graboids turn up and things get serious. Do you know what I mean? But I did really enjoy that, and I'm, I'm pleased that obviously it, it carried on with the similar sort of vibe from the first one. And I do quite like how daft the whole thing is. It's quite fun. Like, it really feels a lot sillier than the first one. And I think this is mostly because the mystery itself isn't as strong. So if you mm. do think back to the first one, you know, we see a few different people die in quite horrific ways without really having any idea what's happening. And it really builds around the mystery of the Graboids until we get the reveal. And the way that they do this leans much more into the horror elements of the film. But you don't really get that in this one because to some extent we already know what we're about to encounter. So like you get a couple of people at the beginning who would get killed and it's like, well, we, we, we know what's happening to him. Obviously this is a Tremors film. Like we know it's going to be, it's going to be the big worms. So because the mystery and the tension isn't as strong, it feels like the film is instead leaning more into the wackiness and it's a bit more fun and a bit more laid back in general, I thought. And I think a lot of the decisions that the characters make are like a little bit sillier. And I was like, if you like big dumb horror then I think this would tick a lot of boxes for you. And just finally, love the music. Love the music. It's like this really interesting blend of Western and horror, and it's quite atmospheric, but then dramatic at times, but then also really relaxing at other times. But it all felt really uniform and very location and mm. genre appropriate. Um, those were the main things that I liked about it. So what what are your thoughts on some of those, first yeah, of all? No, I, then... I, I, I completely agree. Obviously, we've talked a little bit about Bert as a character there. What One thing I, I, I particularly agree with you there is how it works as a sequel. So, mm. like you say, the first one, it's a lot more tension, a lot more. Is that, I'd say the first one's a lot more of a horror film, um, mm -hmm. or certainly a thriller film, whereas this is a little bit more thriller, it's a bit of horror, action, there's comedy in there as well. So generically, it's all over the place, but in a good way, good balance and stuff like that. But for me, for the large part, this is how you do a sequel, right? So you've mm -hmm. got the world, you've got the rules of your world, you don't need to establish them again. The world has carried on since the events of the first film. So how is it going to be different? So by upping the stakes slightly, by giving the Graboids legs mm -hmm. and showing that they've evolved and and stuff like that, you get a really you know get a lot more sweet juice out of the fruit type of thing, don't you? And mm -hmm. I think it works really really well. You know there are the there are those typical sequel things like some of the actors don't come back, so Kevin Bacon and Reba McIntyre don't come back, but you don't you you don't really miss them. Do you know what I mean? It gives a good well not as much as you as you do. Not as much as you would if it had been done badly, I suppose. Is, is, I pulled is, a, yeah. I pulled a face there, listeners, when he yeah. said that, which is why he had to, he, which is why he had to sort but, of second guess his but, but, but also, they give good reasons for them not being there in a way, they do. They do. in a way that they could come back. So he just sort of goes, mm -hmm. oh, he went off and married, he got married, and you know, he settled down, and 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 Bert's wife left him, who's Reba yeah. McIntyre, and which is obviously entirely feasible because of the nature of what Bert is like as a character and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So mm -hmm. A could definitely have come back, or you know, they're still making sequels, they still come back now. But B, I I didn't feel their absence as much. I thought you got a really good substitute for for Kevin Bacon's character in in, in Grady and there and stuff like that. So I really like that they took what was good about the first one and expanded it and stuff like that, and they made it like like we've said a bit funnier the world expansion exploration is really good i think that you know they also do little things that i really enjoyed like again messing around with the rules rules of the, of, of the first one so for example that whole thing of well, why don't you just get the army in and blow the shit out of them yeah and yeah, they sort yeah. of go because the more people who are causing boots on the ground the more likely it is they'll just come up in numbers mm -hmm. and attack you so you so they basically they, they, they basically solve that problem Mm -hmm. you know they 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 solve their, they, it's like when you, you know quite often if you, you get it in comic book films where it's like you have to solve the problem of well this person's so powerful the rock up you know why isn't captain marvel in all of endgame because if she's yeah. there no one else is needed yeah <laughs> like yeah. so so you know stuff like that so so i enjoyed that um again more exposition on the graboids you find out they're not aliens they're prehistoric or they're mm -hmm. really really old life forms and stuff like that and they don't spoon feed you too much and stuff like that so i you know still really enjoyed that yeah i think it's it, it's quite 
it's quite understated in its stakes. You know, they're just there in the in the wilderness, in the desert, surrounded by graboids. No one mentions about the world ending or anything like that. So quite like it's it's both understated in its stakes and its world building, but then its execution's really melodramatic. Mm-hmm. You know, with mm-hmm. the guts and the blood and, and and the way the characters are and stuff like that. So I think it works well to keep it light and floaty, but also like enjoyable. It's a flo- it's a it's a nice souffle of a film. It's a well made omelet of a film. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I, I I I enjoyed it much more than I thought I was going to. It's not one that like I'm not going to be going back to it all the time. But I just I had fun with it. Um, and just lastly as well, Fred Ward in this. So first of all, I think he's great in this. He gets more to do because he's on. He's he's more of the lead character as Earl rather than rather than sharing it with Kevin Bacon. Since we did the first Tremors, he has passed away. So I just mm-hmm. thought, pay a little tribute. He's brilliant in this. Um, really, really likable. And as well, I'll say this for him: great hair. Oh, great hair! Wonderful hair. Top notch hair. hair in it. And I love as well. So because it's quite subtle to begin with. Because obviously he's he's sort of like like a bit of a washed up has been yeah. like living in his trailer on his ostrich farm and he's got like all these graboid like paraphernalia and stuff where they've obviously become quite the celebrities yeah, after yeah, what yeah. had happened um but he's just like he's a bit of a wreck he doesn't look too good and whatever and then like the first woman he meets the first woman he interacts with suddenly oh he's shaved and he's washed <laughs> his hair and he tucks his shirt in like just <laughs> funny little things like that and i, I did i did enjoy that because i noticed the, the shirt tucking in thing especially because it just sort of indicates he's probably not really been around many people mm. like since since it happened like he's literally just living on his little sort of ostrich farm thing and then, like, literally the first woman, he's like, oh, fuck, better tuck my shirt in sort of thing. <laughs> Cute little moments like that I, th- I thought were good. But, yeah, he is really likeable. Okay, so we'll move on to the dislikes. Then. Anything we didn't like about uh, Tremors 2 Aftershocks. Um, Alice, I'll, I'll come to you first because you you picked it. What, uh, I mean, is there anything? Is there anything you didn't like? What, what uh, you, you, you've got a face like there is, so, so... Mm. I mean, you're nodding. I don't mean she's just pulling a face. <laughs> well, I'm always what, pulling a face, really. What, everyone's always pulling a face. But uh, <laughs> what what didn't you like or what would you change about it? So More sequels? In, in <laughs> seven or eight sequels is not enough, in my opinion. <laughs> I want one for every graboid. Um, so in contrast to what you said earlier, for me, there is a massive Kevin Bacon-shaped hole mm. in this film. So part of the charm of the first one is the relationship between Val and Earl. You get to know a bit about them and what they're like, and a lot of this is explored through show, don't tell. But in this one, you don't quite get as much of that with all the characters. So Earl's new buddy, um, if you like, so he's the guy, he's Grady, isn't it? So is it Chris Gartin? Yeah, and he's not... He's, he's I the was actor. looking at him because I was like... At first, I thought it was Justin Bartha because he looks a bit like him. And then I was like, but he's not. And then I thought, I've not seen him in anything. No, no, I didn't um, recognise the he's fella. He's done a lot of Italian stuff, but no. I mean, I thought, uh. he was, I thought he was, I mean, he's not Kevin Bacon, but I did think he was good in it. But yeah, he's not the same. And I will I will say that it's not the same. I think, I, I think he did really well with what mm. was given to him. And, and the situation he sort of found himself in. But for me, the relationship, it didn't really feel that authentic or natural. So like, so Grady, the character, he's a, like a bit of a fanboy for Earl because obviously after he and Val became like a little bit famous and stuff, he was quite into it. Mm. And I don't mind the dynamic of that in and of itself. And, but it, it, the whole thing just kind of feels a little bit forced and a lot of their conversations. So a lot of the conversations between Earl and Grady are a bit exposition dumpy, like just sort of reiterating things that have happened between yeah. the first film and the Particularly second film. Particularly in the first 20 minutes or so, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's a bit like, oh, you were this guy and this is what you did. Oh, and I heard you did this as soon as you, yeah. and it was, it was all just very, very much like that. Uh, so whereas obviously in the first film with Val and Earl's relationship, because it's already been established. They've got a bit of history together. So you just kind of believe them a bit more and you're Mm. rooting for them. So I suppose what I'm trying to get at is that we wanted to see another buddy, you know, you know, the buddy type relationship. And it just didn't quite land for me in this. It Mm. didn't quite have the same impact. Do you think there's an element of Kevin Bacon couldn't do it? So they just replaced him as best they could almost like for like. So Earl's a bit older so Kevin Bacon's a bit younger, so they just went and give him another young sort of psych, like not psychic, but you know, well, it's a psychic in this instance, but in the mm-hmm. first one, it's not like give him an, you know, another young buddy or whatever. And and really they could have just either not had a similar character or come up with a completely different 
dynamic or whatever. Do you think they've just they've just tried to swap out and sort of like basically substitute some substitute bacon? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Maybe it's just maybe it's not different enough. But it, it, it at the same time, I want to defend the film and obviously say that they want to try and indicate that Earl has been a bit isolated for this time. Yeah. He doesn't really have anyone. You know, Val left. He spent all his money. There is so, sort of something quite sad about the situation he's in. So who would he have had around him? Like, it makes sense that he didn't really have mm. anyone around him. And so, you know, you get this young, kind of bright-eyed, bushy-tailed young lad who's like, oh, my God, you're Earl, you're the Graboid killer type thing. So I, I, I get it, and I appreciate that that's what they were doing, but it just lacked a bit of oomph for me in terms of the relationship between them. And so I didn't, like, I just wasn't super rooting for them and 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 that sort of thing. Um. And just generally, I found it just a little bit weak in a few places. So some of the script choices, some of the story and character development, and at times it did feel a tiny little bit boring, especially the first sort of, again, mm. I keep saying the first th sort of 30 minutes or so. So this film really does benefit from Bert showing back up. And like he is, he is the entertainment in this, I think. Mm. So when he's not there there were times where it did sort of drop off a little bit for me and I was like, mm. oh, the energy the energy's lacking a little bit here. It feels like there's a lot less characters in this. Mm. There's like five yes. characters. There's, the, there's you know, Earl, Grady, Bert. Uh, I can't remember what the scientist is called. No, but I know who you mean. Uh, the yeah, scientist yeah. lady. And, and the guy who the guy hired who, him. The guy who hires him and the other yeah. guy that gets killed. Yeah. And that's like six, whereas in the first one, it feels like there's sort of 10, 15 solid characters. Yeah, because you've got the shopkeeper, you've got the young lad, you've got mm. the woman and her daughter, you've got Rhonda, like Bert and his wife. There are there are a few more and it's they're all really different from one another as mm. well. So you sort of get you, you get um you get sort of different reactions to yeah. what's going on and stuff and and how they're all differently affected by the mystery. And then that in itself sort of also enhances because they all obviously know each other because the town that they live in is so so small. Can you even call it a town? Like it's, it's a, not it's even a place, is it? Isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Whereas in this one, it's like because it's not personal to them. Like they, it's in Mexico, isn't it? They don't live there. Mm. They've gone from where they are to where the situation is. So it feels a lot less personal, I think, because it's not their homes being destroyed. You know, mm. it's not a, a, a worm sort of coming through the wall of your basement and you having to shoot it to death with the mm. elephant gun sort of thing. <laughs> so I, I think you lose a little bit. You lose do, a do little you think, bit of it. Do you think perhaps there's an element of it of, well, they've just tried to, they've just tried to repeat the same formula? A, a little bit, but I think have maybe missed on what made that first yeah. one magical. They've, they've tried to repeat <laughs> it with less money, mm. and they've ended up with a sort of a bit of a, a bit of a tribute act. So I, I like yeah. a lot about it, but I can see when you think about it as a sequel, what I've said is good is good, but but in, in my opinion, but but it's it's more of the same, mm -hmm. but more of the same. It's almost like you know, it's like it's it's diet tremors. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? A, a little bit. I'd be interested to know <laughs> how much more it goes on with the sequels because this is the last one Earl's in. And I think right. from what I can tell from reading about the sequels, they then become all about Bert. Okay. So I'm I'm very soon about to have a lot of time on my hands. <laughs> so maybe, maybe it's time to sit down and do the Tremors Marathon <laughs> and watch them back to back. I think maybe it's I'll seven. I think there's seven of them. Okay, yeah. I'll see. It's about time. <laughs> I reckon I need to watch them, you know. Um, what about you? Is there anything that you didn't like or you would change? Um, do you know what? A lot of what you said didn't really come into mind, but then I think that's because I didn't have a relationship with the first one. And the only relationship I really have with it now is that I watched it for the podcast. Yeah. Whereas it, it was so rooted in nostalgia for you oh, that I can yeah, completely deeply. see yep. that why you have that big Kevin Bacon-sized hole and mm. I'm like, yeah, it's sort of all right. Do you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. you're being like, oh, when I watched it when I was a kid, and it was Kevin Bacon and Fred Ward and all that sort of stuff. So so I, I didn't really see that, but I think that's down to both of our different relationships with the film. Mm. Um, f yeah, a few pacing issues, sort of like, mm. like you say, a few exposition issues. Nothing particularly big. There was that issue again of who's this for? Because it doesn't mm -hmm. need to be an 18 or 15 or whatever it is. I'm not sure what, what it is, but I think it's probably a 15. Um, but it's, it's like, it, there's no reason it couldn't just be like gremlins. Yeah. You know, yeah, so, and, 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 and stuff like that. Um, and there were, you know, 
1996, so that does go a long way to explaining this, but there is also some pretty questionable CGI in yeah. the last 10, 15 minutes. Okay, sure. Um, sure, sure, now, sure. I, and I get it, you know, it's 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 almost 30 years old. Um, but it is, as we always say, it's post-Terminator 2, so, mm. uh, and that still looks great. So, other than that, no, not loads, really. I'm just not that bothered on the franchise. Mm-hmm. Like, I can see I see this one and the, and the first one for what they are. Um, if you pick the third one, fourth one, eleventh one, <laughs> um, I'd watch those. But I'm not going to be going in and, you know, it's not going to become my franchise or, 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 or anything like that. Okay, so we'll move on to talking about the critical reception then. Now, I haven't seen the critical reception because that's the format of this little podcast. So how do I think it did? I'm going to say it did so not that well, but I'll, I will cop to something, which is obviously when I was finding the film, I was making sure I could find where it was. And I did read the sentence, something like, this is considered to be one of the better direct-to-video sequels, as in not of yes. Tremors. Generally speaking, direct-to-video sequels aren't always well-reviewed. So I'm going to say it's yes. not reviewed that well, but not that badly. Do you know what I mean? We're mm-hmm. not. So I don't think we're, we're looking at like a, you know, your twos and your threes and your fours. But I'm going to say it did a five, a five and a half. Okay. Five and a half, I'm going to say. Okay, is that what you would give it? I would give it a six. Okay. Yeah, I thought it was... Or maybe a high five. I thought it was. I'd, I yeah. thought it was decent. Yeah, I mean, even a five point eight. That's what I'm going to give it. Yeah, I'd probably, I'd probably be right there with you. I think yeah. it's sort of a high five. It's sort fine. Of thing. It's fine. It's yeah. not the one set in the 1800s which we were talking about, but 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 it's you know it's fine. It's Tremors Can't two after shocks. Yeah. <laughs> Can't wait to watch that. <laughs> Sounds like the best thing ever. Alice is okay. back, everyone. Guess what? Tremors four. Tremors uh, <laughs> four, five, six, seven, and eight. Um, so so what? How did it do then? Let's hear. Let's hear the scores. Okay, so on IMDb, it gets 5.9 out of 10. And then over on Rotten Tomatoes, the critics give it 60%. Right? Generous. It's only 10 reviews, though. Not many reviews on there at all. And then the audience give it 46%. Now, when I, like I said, a huge part of the reason that I picked it was because I just, I remembered the feeling that it gave me Mm. when watching it as a kid. It was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. So when I saw those scores initially, I was like, oh, that's pretty low. I think I can definitely pick this for the podcast. Mm. And then now sort of having watched it, I don't think really those scores are that unfair. Oh, this one's quite harsh. Well, give give me the three again and I'll work out the average. It was 5.9. Yeah. 60 and then 46. 46 does drag it down. It yeah, does. so that, that is 55, so or okay. 5.5. So I would go with, I'd happily be kind and say appropriately rated, but if you want to go overrated, it's your choice. You get the deciding vote. No, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that's overrated. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm quite surprised at the critics' score that they gave it mm. 60%, but I think from what I could read, they sort of enjoyed how silly it was. Yeah. Yeah, I'm quite surprised that you don't often get the audience being that much harsher than the critics. Mm -hmm. So I'd say the audience score, that is harsh, but obviously working out on that average of 55 or 5.5 out of 10, for me, I think we're agreed there. Appropriately rated, but underseen, maybe maybe worth a look. I think definitely underseen. If you look at the amount of reviews that it has online, Mm. it isn't loads. Obviously, it was straight to video. So there's no box office, which is obviously, it's always a pain in the ass to try and figure them out. So I think there's definitely an argument that this is underseen. I mean, I sort of felt like Tremors was underseen as well. So if that is, then I think this definitely is. So there we have it. Tremors 2 Aftershocks, maybe appropriately rated, but I think definitely underseen. And Mm. if you like big, dumb, crazy horror, then I reckon there's something in this for you. But anyway, enough about me and my worms. Uh, Josh, It's your turn to pick. What are we going to be watching for next week? Uh, So we're coming to that time now where we've only got a few left before you go off and have a babby. Oh. Which you're looking forward to. I know you've mentioned it a few times. Um, So next week's going to be my... What we've got to do? We've got three episodes left. Mm -hmm. Next week is going to be my last pick. Okay. The week after, you're going to pick one. And then your last episode, you've got one that you just want to talk about and I'm going to let you talk about it. How's Mm -hmm. that sound? 
fun. Yep, love it. Love so in, my time to shine, being self indulgent and all that. <laughs> so, in the spirit of the fact that in the podcast, you know, there has been times where we've picked certain actors and we really love their work and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Keanu Reeves. We yet to do a Christian Bale film, but I know we both like Christian Bale. But, I, mean, but I don't even really know. I don't think I've seen that much. No, of him he's, in. I think he's, he was in Spider Man or something like that. He's all um, right. any, yeah. Anyway, um, but one of those actors is Tom Hardy. Mm-hmm. And one of his breakout performances was a little film called Bronson. Ooh. So next week, we're going to be talking about Bronson. Oh, okay. Into it. Let's, let's yeah, see indeed, we indeed. Yes, so there we go. Next week we're going to be talking about uh, Bronson. In the meantime, if you'd like to get in touch with us, it's films on that pod at gmail.com. We're on all the social medias. Just search for Just Films and that, and you'll find us on Facebook, Twitter, X, whatever it's called now, Instagram, TikTok. We're on YouTube. Give us a follow. And uh, yeah, we're always putting stuff out there. Thank you very much for listening. We'll see you next week to be talking about Charlie Bronson. Uh, it's goodbye from me. Cheerio. Bye. Now on Broadway, an enemy of the people is a New York Times critic's pick. Jeremy Strong is one of the great actors of his generation, hails the Chicago Tribune. In a performance, the Wall Street Journal praises as powerfully affecting and bitterly funny. Michael Imperioli sets off sparks, cheers the Hollywood Reporter. Victoria Pedretti is luminous, rings variety. From director Sam Gold and playwright Amy Herzog, an enemy of the people is urgent, electrifying, and haunting, declares USA Today. An enemy of the people, on Broadway through June 16th only. Tired of ads intruding into your favorite comedy podcasts? Good news. Ad-free listening is available on Amazon Music for all the music plus top podcasts included with your Prime membership. Dive into a world of laughs by downloading the Amazon Music app for free or go to amazon.com slash comedy ad free. That's amazon.com slash comedy ad free to catch up on the latest episodes without the ads. Need new glasses or want a fresh new style? Warby Parker has you covered. Glasses start at just 95 bucks, including anti-reflective, scratch-resistant prescription lenses that block 100% of UV rays. Every frame's designed in-house, with a huge selection of styles for every face shape. And with Warby Parker's free home try-on program, you can order five pairs to try at home for free. Shipping is free both ways, too. Go to warbyparker.com covered to try five pairs of frames at home for free. warbyparker.com covered.